Good morning, dear students. Uh, today we are going to talk about the last uh, session of this lesson, or the last section of this lesson that is uh, excretion. See, whole life processes in that many life processes we have seen. Now we are going to talk about last life process that is excretion. In that also the function of kidney, the function of nephron, and the function of various things related to the excretion we have seen. All the parts. All the excretive parts in our body we have discussed about. So today we are going to talk about hemodialysis. This hemodialysis is also excretion. This is the part of excretion. So we are going to talk about hemodialysis. This hemodialysis is also said to be artificial kidney. Restricted blood flow. Restricted 
would express then we have to clean our blood we have to purify our blood with the help of the hemodialysis or with the help of the artificial kidney and there are certain reasons these certain reasons are responsible for the kidney failure or malfunctioning of the kidney that is injury to the kidney infection to the kidney and restricted blood flow these are certain reasons for the kidney failure in such cases then what person can do if such reasons are responsible for the kidney failure then what person can do if this uh, things would happen then kidney cannot function well and what would happen the nitrogenous waste urea uric acid some excess amount of minerals ammonia will again backflow into the blood and it may cause some disorders in our body means our body will not function well because for long time this toxins remaining in our body is malfunctioning of our body body cannot function well certain kind of diseases the body may suffer from so which uh, uh, problems the body may occur the first important problem the body may occur that is hypertension hypertension we have talked about hypertension in our previous video in blood we have seen blood secretion hypertension we have talked about second reason is heart failure heart failure
ammonia, uric acid, urea, some excess amount of mineral the body has to get rid of. Other material must not get rid of, such as uh, glucose and uh, some amino acids, water particles must not get rid of. So that only selective material has to get rid of. Understood? So here I will explain it. So first keep in mind these are the tubules and the linings of these tubules has a small pores. At this small pores, we allow to exit only and only urea, uric acid and uh, some excess amount of minerals. As well as one, one more thing that in further uh, class I will explain you. So first of all I will explain you how exactly this is made up. Okay? So this is the structure given in your textbook. Now suppose so say this is your blood and this is the tubule. Which are selectively permeated. And what happens here? It has a small pores. It has a small pores. And this contains material, which is called as a blood. And blood contains what are the components of blood? Blood contains uh, blood cells. Blood cells means which cells? WBCs, RBCs, platelets are present, platelets are present, as well as. Uh, our blood contains amino acids, amino acids in glucose, as well as so all nitrogenous acids. Nitrogenous waste is also present in the blood. Now what happens here? And this is called as a dialysis fluid. Dialysis fluid. Now students, in class 9, we have seen the process of diffusion. Can you tell me the definition of diffusion? Yes. The substance is when passes from higher concentration to the lower concentration. Whenever any substance, see, suppose you have kept, uh, you have given one beaker and I have added uh, some ink particles into that beaker. Then what would happen? First of all, you will see it is accumulated at one place. But after some time, you will see that color particles are uniformly distributed. Means that particles have moved from higher concentration to the lower concentration. And that process is said to be diffusion process. So here also what will happen? The particles will move from high concentration to the low concentration. Then these particles are present into the blood. And blood cells and platelets anyhow will not pass to the dialysis. Okay, then what we pass to the dialysis solution, solution actually? So you should know first what is present into the dialysis solution. Okay, so dialysis solution contains some amount of glucose, some amount of, sorry, ah, so the dialysis solution contains some amount of glucose, amino acids, amino acids, and water is the waste product. But these dialysis solution does not contain urea, uric acid and ammonia. Do you get me? This solution, dialysis solution do not contain uric acid, urea and uh, amino acids and, uh, do not present in the dialysis, uh, sorry, uric acid, urea and ammonia do not present into the dialysis fluid. Now, whenever this process would start, uh, would start that time what would happen, as I just now I said, in diffusion process, uh, the particles will move from higher concentration to the lower concentration. Now this is the blood which has to be purified. And this blood contains now uh, urea, uric acid and the ammonia particles. This is some toxins. The body has to get rid of. So toxins are present into the blood. And according to the process of diffusion, the, these particles will move from higher concentration to the lower concentration. This only urea, uric acid and ammonia will get transferred from 
other uh, minerals or vitamins also will not pass from this diarrhea uh, from this blood to this because the uh, amount will be same exactly it is our blood whatever our blood contains um, that amount of glucose the same amount of glucose and same amount of amino acids and same amount of minerals will be uh, and same amount of vitamins will be present here also so that it will not pass from here to here but if the patient could be diabetic then the in the patient's blood glucose may be excess so in that case glucose also will get transferred from this blood cells oh sorry from this blood to distribution so actually the patient who is suffering from diabetes uh, for those diabetes patient this uh, dialysis process will be uh, useful to because excess amount of glucose will automatically get removed from the blood so do you get students how the selectively permeable membrane which is present into the pubis is working on this base only everything is dependent so this part is very very important uh, this is this is our blood which has to get purified this blood contains only urea uric acid it transfer okay so uh, now for the part i have to explain with the help of the diagram okay now i will explain you uh, all dialysis machine and how this uh, machine helps to remove the nitrogenous waste from our blood so there is a uh, you can see there is one person who is sleeping and uh, that person has two needles inserted in his wrist so first of all you should know arteries are actually blood distributing capillaries see arteries are always blood distributing capillaries so whenever we donate blood so blood whenever we donate that blood is drawn from our arteries always so in the diagram also you can see whenever the blood is drawn during blood donation even so blood blood whenever the blood is drawn that blood is drawn from the arteries because arteries are blood distributing blood vessels so always whenever one needle is attached to the arteries from arteries the blood is drawn and that blood is a impure blood we can say over here because that blood has to get purified to remove nitrogenous waste so one needle one uh, point of the needle is inserted into the into the artery from here the blood will get draw out which is impure okay and another point is there that is vein you can see so vein what veins are doing veins are actually collecting blood vessels okay now we have seen arteries are uh, distributing blood vessels likewise veins are collecting blood vessels and because of it what happens whatever the particles we have to inject we have to insert in our body that time veins are used because veins are collecting so whenever we get saline we take saline doctors are suggesting to take saline means actually the electrolyte powder directly intravenous we say intravenous because that particles actually has to get into the vein because vein is actually uh, the, all the material it is getting collected through veins as well as whenever blood transfusion takes place just now i talk about blood donation so blood transfusion will take place when the person or patient is taking blood inside that blood is also taken by the vein okay drugs are also taken by the vein even so arteries are drawing out blood and Uh, veins are taking in blood which is purified so this part is clear for you okay now next part is when the blood comes out inside the body uh, platelets are there and this platelets are a coagulating agent coagulation of the blood we are doing means clotting of blood clotting of blood is taking place due to the presence of platelets in our body we are doing this but whenever the blood comes out into the diaphragm at that time there is a no no no, no a chemical is present which can coagulate our blood so for coagulation of blood after uh, uh, drawing out the blood immediately we inject one chemical the name of that chemical is heparin the name of that chemical is heparin and this chemical is injected into the blood after coming out when the blood is drawing out from the artery immediately the first process we inject heparin which is actually responsible for the anti uh, coagulation which is responsible for the coagulation of the 
blood. So this is injected, and after it, the blood is going to the tubules. And how the tubules are functioning? Just now I have explained you. Then blood goes through, passes through the tubules, and these tubules are present inside the box which contains uh, dialysing fluid. And dialysing fluid, what is present in the dialysing fluid? I said you. Dialysing fluid contains all glucose, amino acids, all everything is present. Whatever present into the blood, the same all the things present into the uh, the dialysing fluid. Except dialysing fluid only does not contain urea, uric acid, and ammonia. Other things are present in the blood. And because of diffusion process, what happens? Selectively permeable membrane is present. The lining of the tissues are selectively permeable. So only urea, uric acid, and all these things are passes uh, into the dialysing fluid. Okay. And fresh dialysing fluid is present. and the waste material is uh, attached to the another uh, dialysing fluid this waste material is getting here and after purifying the blood the blood again passes through the uh, through way into the patient's body so naturally actually every day ha and another important thing i forgot to tell you that osmotic pressure of the blood is exactly equal to this machine pressure of this dialysing machine or this dialyzer so um, the blood pressure of our body osmotic pressure to blood pressure of our body and this dialyzing machine body is exactly equal so there is no problem doing it so patient can take dialysis dialysis uh, very easily and conveniently person may not suffer from any problem but whenever the blood enters now into the blood now heparin's effect must get reduced means the heparin it is coagulating it now Uh, anti-coagulating agent is injected into the blood. Now, no need. Once the blood would enter inside the uh, body, then already there is a coagulating agent. So, no need for the coagulation process. So, anti-coagulating uh, agent is injected into the patient's body, and then blood is taken inside, and the person is now free from all this kind of waste. In this manner, this all machine is. Working that is uh, dialyzing machine and the dialyzer. Actually, if the person is healthy, then one uh, eighty liter of um, actually we get filtrate of one eighty liter every day. We get a filtrate of one eighty liter means one eighty liter filtrate we get that has to pass from our body. But only see out of one eighty, we give out only uh, one point half to two liter. What happened to the other filtrate? That other filtrate it reabsorbed in the body. Only reabsorption process do not take place into the dialyzing process. Reabsorption process do not take place because it is artificial. In kidney, what happens? We have seen distal convoluted tubule. In that we have seen that all uh, glucose, amino acids, some amount of vitamins are getting absorbed through arteries and Reaching to the blood, but here this process do not express. One eighty liter of actually filtrate we remove out, but most of the water as per the need of our body, most of the water as well as uh, some glucose, some amino acids, vitamins are getting reabsorbed of, uh, from the body and through the blood, and only two liter of excretory material. 